All right, and welcome to the TSG Multimedia video podcast for July 1st, 2013. This is John sitting here with Dan, as usual, and it looks like, well, it's funny, these, these actually look like faces, but these are, <laughs> these are buildings. Yeah, the, there's some little N-scale buildings. We, we've never really done anything with uh, structures, I don't think, on the podcast, so I, I thought it was about time. And um, anyway, um, I actually got these because um, my grandfather used to be into trains, and he was originally into Lionel, but then uh, sometime in the 70s, I guess, my I think it was my mom and dad actually for Christmas got him an N-scale train set. And so he got into N-scale, and I was into N-scale, so um, I kind of started in N-scale. So I th these were actually his buildings, I think. Oh, wow. So they're pretty old, huh? Yeah. These are, these are some old model kits that I think are one of those kits where the molds are probably 50 years old. Right. And they've been passed around from company to company over the years. Um, I think these were by model power, but they may have been released under other brands, too, depending on what year it is. Uh, the two that are painted, I actually disassembled and put back together because they, uh, I guess my grandfather may have built them and they were built with this really strange yellowish stringy glue that was even <laughs> after, even after years, it was still stringy and, <laughs> and they weren't very hard to pull apart. Um, the, the garish yellow one, unfortunately, uh, I don't know if I built that or what, but that one's put together with something else. I think maybe with some of that, uh, like Ambroid or something. Oh. <laughs> this isn't coming apart. <laughs> I couldn't, not without destroying it. So, yeah. um, I, I, but I just, I brought this in because what these were was, these actually were on little bases too with some stuff around them. And, and it's essentially the same building, but they, they put different windows and different stuff around it to, to make it, I think one was supposed to be a firehouse and one was supposed to be a little store or something. Yeah. But they're all basically the same building. Yeah, it looks like it. it. Looks like they added a little top thingamajig on this one. Right. So, so, what I wanted—I don't know if this shows—but this one is, of course, just unpainted bare plastic because that's how he yeah, and I both. I, I can see through it right here. I don't know right. if that shows up on the camera, but you can kind of see through. Yeah, it. which is exactly what I, what my point was: is that bare plastic is translucent. Right. So these two I've actually painted, and I think even if you did nothing else but just paint them, it's it's a a lot better, huge huh? improvement yeah you know <laughs> well what do you mean i've seen yellow bricks like that that you could see through in real life <laughs> yeah well especially especially if you're going to put a light inside yeah at some point um and it nothing really dumb yeah nothing looks worse uh, is with the structure than having the walls glow <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the magical building <laughs> yeah you know that really looks bad you know light should come through the windows not through the walls so right. um that, yeah, that's just bad. It's just, just as bad. a rule, right? As a rule, yeah. <laughs> and the trouble is, I mean, like with this one, since I really can't get it apart, if I want to ever do something with it, what I'll probably have to do is uh, spray it with some dull coat and then just kind of spot paint it here and there and try to weather it or something. <laughs> I think I just wouldn't use it. Well, yeah. It's not It's not like it's a, that great of a building, you know. But, you know, anyway, I just, I just had it here for the sake of example. But anyway, what I wanted to do with these other two was uh, try a couple different ways of painting brick. Okay. So that's why um, I painted one white and one red. Right. And this is just uh, your basic white, and this is um, actually, the red one's actually Santa Fe mineral brown, but it, it turns out to be a pretty good uh, brick color. Yeah, it looks like real bricks. Yeah. Now, it could be that the, you know, I think I had an old bottle of Floquil, so maybe it's not mixed right. Yeah. Um, but anyway... It, it worked well. It's a good brick color. That's one of the things, too, about stuff like this, is that the ac actual color isn't so critical. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so let's uh, see what we can do with these things. Take this one away. So if you wanted this to look like new brick, you could pretty much, you know, just leave it the, the one solid color. Right. Uh, I did this with an airbrush, too, by the way, which I would recommend... Um, spraying at least for the first coat because if you use a brush it, the paint's going to tend to fill in all the little brick detail oh then it would look yeah that would you know yeah. um, and what you really want that raised brick with the recessed mortar to make this whole thing work so what I'm what I'm doing now is I decided I want to vary the brick color a little bit so I've got some orange paint on a brush and I'm just gonna get most of it off of my paper towel and then I'm gonna just dry brush this a little bit 
in spots. And this is just going to create a little variation. Yeah, because no two bricks ever look the same, right? Right. So this is just a way to, you know, get some variety in there. And as you can see, I'm not being especially careful. Just kind of scrumming it in there. This is kind of a tiny brush, too. You could use a bigger brush. Yeah, I was going to say, it was probably going to take a while with that little tiny brush. Yeah, maybe I should try a bigger brush. Here, wait a minute. <laughs> Actually, the, the best brushes for dry brushing, too, are old brushes that really aren't much good for anything else. Oh, the hard brushes, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I've actually been kind of observing brick um, as I've been out and about, and I've noticed that sometimes you can kind of go either way with mortar. Sometimes the lines are lighter than the bricks, and sometimes they're darker than the bricks. Um, kind of depends on how old it is and where it is. and so. It probably matters what kind of mortar they used. Probably. I'm not yeah. a mortar expert. But. I, I don't know much about it either other than yeah. it's what you find between bricks. But anyway, uh, for mortar I'm just going to use a wash. And I, what I've done is I've, I've got some uh, water soluble paint and I've thinned out quite a bit. It's just a very pale gray color. And uh, I've thinned it out with water and a little bit of uh, win window cleaner to cut the surface tension of the water. And we can just kind of flow this on. I know this looks a little heavy right now, but I'm going to scrub it in and then what I'll do is take a brush that I've just dipped in plain water and kind of smear this around. You can also like pre-wet an area and then put the wash into it and it kind of spreads itself around. Yeah, that looks really neat. I mean, at first, like you said, it started to look like it was going to be all white. But as the, as the paint, the wash kind of settles into the grooves, it really, I mean, seriously, that, that, that looks like a real brick side of a building. Yeah, it's a pretty effective technique. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I'm looking at it through the viewfinder thinking I'm looking at the side of a wall. Or, <laughs> you know, a real wall. Yeah. And what's ironic about that is just having the thing painted the brick color, I thought, even looked pretty good, you know? Yeah. And to add that extra sort of level of detail and realism is... That's pretty cool. So what do you draw? Do you dull coat it when you're done so that it looks um, really flat or what would you do? You might, uh, well, we'll see how this dries. This is a uh, polyscale paint, which unfortunately has been recently discontinued. Um, but it usually dries pretty flat, so it might not need any additional um, treatment. We'll, we'll have to see what it looks like when it actually dries. This is pretty wet right now. Yeah. Once that wash dried, a lot of it kind of disappeared so I ended up having to do it again and, and then the brick got a little bit gray looking so all I did to fix that was uh, just take some more of that mineral brown color that I originally painted the building with and you can just dry brush a little bit of that on over it yeah and that brings the color back so essentially what happened was the, the wash sucked out of the grooves somehow yeah and I've never had that happen before so I don't know what I did to this building that I, I, I haven't done, you know, because this usually t works every time. Yeah. Um, but it, it was very strange. So, in any case, that's the basic idea is that you can use a wash to fill in the mortar. And as you can see, it's kind of subtle and it's, it's not even. There's like, you can see the mortar on this side a little more than on this side. But that's okay, I think, because, well, for one thing, brick walls are rarely uniform. And two, Considering the scale, you know, if you're looking at a building from a distance, which is kind of how you'd see it, you know, if it's an end scale, that's kind of what it's like. Um, you don't necessarily see every mortar line. Right. You know, so that sometimes a little s more subtle is, is better. And another thing you can do 
with this stuff is then it, um, if you want to do some weathering on it, you can get some, you know, of the like the powders that I like on a on a brush and you know put in some streaking and things. Oh, like where the water dripped down or something. Yeah, and just on the side get of the some building. Yeah. yeah, some additional effects that way. Just blend it in. Oh uh, yeah, look at that. So you know you can go as far as you want. You can even use the the powders. Um, if you use, for example, a, a, a rusty color, you can even add color to the brick with that too, using, you know, little touches here and there. Yeah, the point is it makes more variations on the bricks, and like I said earlier, no two bricks are ever exactly alike. Right. So generally, you know, the more the more mottled and, and uneven it looks, the better. Especially bricks on an old building, which I would... This looks like an old building to me. Yeah, so... I don't think they even make brick buildings anymore, do they? Uh, They're like earthquake know. traps. Well, I don't, I, I've seen newer buildings that have brick on them. Now yeah. I don't know if it's structural or not. It's probably just a fascia, I would expect. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, I guess that'll wrap it up for this one. Uh, next month, we're going to show how to detail on whether the white brick building... Yeah, so it'll be kind of a part two. Yeah, so make sure you tune in for that. That'll be on August 1st. And also, don't forget, we'll have another audio podcast coming out on July 15th. And I guess we'll see you then. So thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks.